You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. Today we have with us Colleen Nelson, the finalists for the High Plains Book Fest. And she has a young adult novel called Spin. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But why don't we uh, just talk a little bit about you first. Tell us about yourself. Um, so thank you so much for um, uh, like interviewing me. I really appreciate it. I'm very excited to be nominated again for a High Plains Book Award. My name is Colleen Nelson, and I am a writer from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I have two boys who are both officially teenagers and started high school today. So hopefully that went well. Um, I also have a dog named Rosie, a Westie that uh, is the favorite person in the household. Um, and I teach grade eight. So it's a busy couple of weeks getting ready for school uh, and all the other things that entails this year. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I, I, uh, I recall you, you actually won the category last year, didn't you? I did, yes. My book, Saudia, won. So same publisher, Dundurn, is based in Toronto. Um, and yeah, Saudia is uh, one of the students in my grade eight class today was very excited because she said she's read Saudia three times. And I thought that was so <laughs> sweet. Um, so yeah, I tend to really pull on my experiences as a teacher um, through the, the books that I write. Um, Saudia specifically was about a girl named Saudia who loved playing basketball, but the team that she was on was entering a tournament and she might have to take off her hijab, which is something that is based on true experience. Um, Spin, which I'm nominated for this time, is about a girl named Dizzy, who uh, her mom is a very famous singer but has kept her, her two children a secret. Um, and so Dizzy is kind of going through an identity crisis to wanna to know more about who her mom is and how her mom can fit into her life. So that is not based on any true experience <laughs> that I've had, but um, the relationship between Dizzy and her best friend, Maya, that to me is uh, very much based on how I've seen teenage girls interact with each other and the kind of support network that they provide when one of their friends is going through a crisis. Um, and then the, the story also has two other points of view. Lou is her brother and Ray is her dad. So you hear about some of the things that they struggle with as well. Yeah, I think it's a little bit unusual uh, in a in a YA novel to have the point of view of the father, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with a, a free female protagonist. Yeah, you know, Mark, I actually struggled, not struggled, but I did wonder about that. Um, the publisher certainly could have said that, you know, this isn't working for a YA book to hear from an adult. And uh, I really liked writing Ray's point of view. And because the mom, um, Georgia Waters, who's totally fictionalized, because she's not in the story at all, I wanted to give some backstory to what their relationship was like so that the reader did feel some sympathy for Georgia and to kind of explain why she would have abandoned her children the way that she did. Because ultimately she chose her fame over being a mom, um, which is interesting. You know, it's a, I just found it like as a mom myself, it's, kind, it's an, a conundrum that the decision would be very easy for me, but you see a lot of celebrities who it does seem that they make a different choice. So what leads somebody to do that? Yeah, and it's, a, it's such an interesting setup. I mean, I think a lot of uh, kids would think, oh, great, I've got this famous mom, but you know, it, the reality that <laughs> suddenly... Uh, yes. On, uh, a hundred percent. And you know, I, uh, I'm trying to, I started this book quite a while ago. It's out with my publisher for longer than I care to think about. And, uh, and I remember working on it and being at the grocery store. And for a long time, celebrities were having babies. And the, I mean, I know more names of celebrities' children than I care to admit. And I don't know these people. Why do I know their names? Um, so I just think that we do put 
these little children in the spotlight and we're hungry to know details about their lives, which are probably really boring. But, um, but the celebrities, they haven't asked for that for their children. So in Georgia's and, and Ray, the parents, in their way, they've tried to protect their kids from having to deal with some of that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I understand completely why you might want to keep that uh, to yourself a little bit. Yes, some type of privacy, definitely. Yeah, indeed. Well, it sounds like just a fascinating book. Um, who do you think the audience would be for this book? Um, so, I mean, I have two boys, so I'm always trying to write books that I think they would enjoy. Uh, truth be told, they're not big readers. I always say that I'm the, I have the barefoot children of the cobbler like <laughs> I love reading and writing and uh, my children will basically do anything they can to avoid it um, so I mean I, definitely females will enjoy this book because Dizzy's the main character but I did try to add in the male influences with both Ray and Lou's voices so that the book has some wide-ranging appeal um, mm -hmm. it's specifically targeted at sort of a 12 to 15 age group as YA but um, I did speak with somebody from uh, the High Plains Book Awards and she was lovely and told me that she had really enjoyed the book and she was in her 70s. <laughs> so I thought that was such a compliment. Um, but yeah, I do, you know, when you write, you're always kind of thinking of a huge audience, not just a really specific one, because I'm a big believer that books can be mirrors and windows and doors. So while somebody who is 15 might see themselves reflected in some of the struggles Dizzy is going through, it's also a great way for somebody who's a lot older to look and see what kids today are going through. And so to them, it would be a window into their lives. Well, I, I, I really am a firm believer that well-written literature, uh, well-written YA literature works for any age. Uh, yes, I totally agree. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, well, sounds like it'd have a large audience. Uh, one, one thing about it, um, it, it's a book where your protagonist doesn't seem to have any real romantic interests. So another uh, unusual feature. Yes, and um, funnily enough, a number of my books also don't have romance in them. <laughs> One of my friends who uh, she does a lot of um, book reviews on radio here, she comments on that a lot. And I read a ton of young adult and uh, middle grade books for my classroom. To be honest, um, I'm not super comfortable writing like romance scenes. I feel like they can come off so cheesy and cliche. So I think it's better to just totally steer clear. Um, so in some of the earlier versions, uh, Dizzy's brother has a best friend and there was some romantic inclinations early on, but sometimes it can muddy the water, you know? Like I really wanted her personal, um, her journey to find out who she is and how she fits into her mom's life. That was my main focus. And sometimes romance can sidetrack it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, that's the reason I'm going to say on record, but the actual reason is I get really cringy <laughs> writing kissing scenes for 15 year olds. So I just don't. <laughs> See, yeah, okay. Well, it works. It's uh, you know, it actually, uh, it, it could sidetrack, uh, uh, person's life, both in literature and in real life, too, for that matter. That's true. <laughs> yes, you're right. a good time just to kind of think about who you are and try to find yourself. So. Yes, Perfect. yes, yes. A lot of teenage um, mental energy gets put into thinking about their romantic interests. And uh, as an adult, you look back and wonder, why did I waste all that time on that? Yes, yes. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add at this point? Well, um, I really appreciate the interview. Thank you so much. And uh, I just, you know, um, 
An organization like the High Plains Book Awards, it just means so much to authors to have nominations like this. And I know how much work gets put into not just reading all of the books, but contacting the authors and then putting together the actual award ceremony, which I know won't be happening this year. But I just want to say thank you so much to all of the people involved. It, it honestly does. It means so much. Um, writing is a very solitary endeavor and you never know if what you write, what you put out there is going to be well received or not. So um, to get acknowledgement like this, it just means a lot. So thank you very much. Well, you're so very welcome. <laughs> very good to see you. And I'm, I'm thank you, Mark. delighted that uh, we could have this chat today. Yes. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.